Hey, what's up guys? My name is The Cherno and welcome back to my OpenGL series. Mixing it up a little bit with the set. I mean, the last one, you you guys were certainly noticing that, that I was just, I waved my hands around a lot. I was coming pretty close to hitting that cactus occasionally. And that was just, I don't want to lose a hand. So we're basically mixing it up. We're basically changing. I thought I'd make a subtle kind of change just to get rid of that whole risk of losing a hand. I didn't want to overreact or anything like that. So I, I, I changed the set slightly. Um, kind of got rid of the cactus. It's still in this room, but it's all the way over there. Anyway, hope you guys like this new kind of format. It's going to be a lot more casual because I, I'm not a big fan of being professional quite to, to be quite frank with you guys. And hopefully this is just going to be, going to be a, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit easier for you guys to watch and listen to as well without kind of me going through everything like a robot and just quickly kind of and have, having to spend like an hour or two editing every single video. So anyway, welcome back to my OpenGL series. Last time we talked about shader stuff, and in fact the last two episodes we've been kind of talking about shader stuff. Um, specifically, we talked about what shaders were and we actually had to go at writing a very simple vertex and fragment shader that basically just made our triangle red. If you guys haven't seen that episode yet, definitely click up there because you need to watch that in order to get this video because what this video is going to, is going to be about is just basically continuing on with that and more specifically, I'm going to show you how I like to deal with shaders. Uh, because kind of what we've been doing right now with the code um, is basically, I mean, if we look at the code that we had last time, we have this function where we compile a shader um, and then we kind of create it and all of that, but we still have to basically take it in. Well, the biggest problem here right now for us is that we still need to take it in kind of as strings. Um, and that's a bit of an issue because, well, first of all, looking at these strings, you can see we have to add new line characters and quotes everywhere. It's just not very like comfortable for us to write shaders at this, at this point and it, it's pretty easy to just miss a new line or something like that and end up with some kind of bug. And I don't want to really do that. So we're definitely going to fix that up so that we can actually take our shaders in from a file. And specifically, what I see a lot of people doing, which is, I mean, completely reasonable because OpenGL does kind of enforce it to a degree, uh, is that what people will actually do is create two different files. One for the vertex shader and one for the fragment shader. I'm really not a fan of that to be honest. I mean, having two different files, like why? I mean, in some cases, it can be useful to divide shaders up. Uh, for example, you might have a vertex shader, which just takes in like a certain amount of parameters, certain amount of inputs, and just outputs a position, and that's it, or provides some kind of data to the fragment shader. And it might be a really simple vertex shader, which you can pair up with three different fragment shaders, for example. And in that case, you might argue, well, okay, you know, I'm loading this file. I don't want to necessarily tie the two shaders together, like the vertex and the fragment shader together. I don't necessarily want to do that. Um, that's one argument, but we, we've got to like, we'll deal with that as well in a minute here. But the, the, the big thing is that I don't like having to, like, why have, to, why have two different files, right? There's no actual reason for that. It's actually a little bit annoying. You have to make two different files. You have to read in two different files. When you're editing them, you have to like switch between the two or have them open side by side. It's just not very comfortable. And I'm all about comfort. Like clearly I'm sitting on a couch here instead of a chair and a table. So what I like to do is combine the two shaders into one file right? Just have one file with a vertex and a fragment shader. And of course, in the future, if you want to use one vertex shader with a bunch of fragment shaders, you can still do that. You can still, because obviously when we give the shaders to OpenGL at the end, they still need to have that clear division, right? We can't just simply give OpenGL one, like one string of source code, and then it can deal with it. It still needs to kind of know, it still needs to kind of have that distinction between this is my vertex shader source code, and this is my fragment shader source code, and we're still going to provide it with that. It's just on our side, basically, as the user, as the program, as the developer writing this kind of code, we're going to write it all in one file, and I'll show you how we divide it into two shaders in a minute. This is very much like DirectX. You might, you might actually kind of, throughout the series, you'll probably see me reference Direct3D11 specifically quite a lot with how I actually organize my OpenGL code, because when you deal with game engines, you'll be using multiple APIs, multiple graphics APIs, most likely, if it's a serious engine. Um, and you kind of will probably, if your engine supports Direct3D, or even if it doesn't, you'll probably find yourself making OpenGL behave more like DirectX, because DirectX is just a better API. Anyway, 
Let's get into some code and I'll show you how all this is going to work. So the first thing we're actually going to do is just create a file which contains these two shaders so that we know how we're actually going to deal with them. So over here in my kind of source directory, I'm actually going to right click on OpenGL, hit add, and then new folder. We're going to call this res, which stands for resources. And then under that res folder, I'm actually going to create another folder called shaders. And this is specifically going to be for shaders. We'll, we will have other resources like textures and stuff like that in the future. So I just want to keep all of this really nice and tidy. Uh, we'll right click on shaders, hit add new item. And then here I'm just going to add a file. Now it doesn't matter what you click here because we're kind of going to change the extension anyway. We're just going to call this shader dot shader or specifically we might rename this to something like well, I don't know, it just makes a, it makes that triangle red. We're just gonna call it basic.shader because this is just going to be like our basic shader that we deal with. I'm gonna hit add. And now we have a shader. You can see that it's not showing up as like the C++ icon, which is very important. We don't want to accidentally compile this as C++ code because of course it won't compile. Let's go back to application.cpp. I'm going to copy this entire kind of block of code and I'm gonna paste it into this file. Now we need to clean this up a little bit. Specifically, I'm going to get rid of the string, of course, from both of these here. And then to, to actually clean this up, we could go through this kind of line by line. It's going to be a bit hard. So I'll show you guys a bit of a trick. If you hit control H, that will bring up the find and replace dialog, which you can see over here. We're going to grab quotes and replace them with nothing. If you hit alt A, or I think there's a replace all button here, alt A, we'll get rid of all that. And then finally, we want to get rid of the new lines as well. So I'll also replace backslash N with nothing, alt A done. And there we go. You can see how much easier that was than kind of just going through this code and cleaning everything up manually. Okay, fantastic. We've got this kind of hard to tell the distinction though between a vertex and a fragment shader. So what I like to do is just come up here to the top and I'm going to hit hash shader and then vertex. Okay. And then I'm going to copy that and just above the fragment shader call this fragment. So when we have all of our different shaders, we might have other shader types like tessellation shaders or something like that, geometry shaders, that kind of stuff. We can also probably add a section for that. But for now, you can see that I've clearly kind of divided this into my fragment shader and my vertex shader. Don't worry too much about the syntax highlighting here because we, we have actually specified the dot shader extension. Visual Studio is probably going to try and highlight this as if it was HLSL, so like a direct X kind of shader. But anyway, that's, that's still kind of sort of helpful for us because it highlights some things like numbers um, and kind of makes that easier to see. But you can see this, this is kind of my strategy for laying out shaders. It's very easy. You can see what's going on all at once. You don't need to flip between two different files. Uh, and it's just, yeah, it's just really nice and easy and, and clean and organized. So let's go back to our, our application. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this entire block here now. Now to kind of understand what's going on here, we have our create shader function, which takes in the two strings of source code. We still need to provide it with two different strings of source code. So now really our plan is just to take this file and divide it up into two blocks of strings, right? Into two strings, our fragment shader source code and our vertex shader source code. So let's go back to application and do that. I'm going to scroll up here, uh, up here to the very top. We'll just write this function at the top. Why not? Static, uh, we'll make it void for now. Um, and we'll call this parse shader. And then I'm going to just make this take in a const std string. And this will be a, our file. I might call this file path. And the way that we're actually going to read this in is of course, first of all, we need to open a file. And I'm going to do this in a bit of like a C++, modern C++ way. Not necessarily the way that I would personally read files in a game engine because C++ tends to be a little bit slower than the C kind of file API, but because this series is obviously just about OpenGL, I want to kind of write code that's a lot easier to read and a lot safer and all that. So I'm just going to basically include something called fstream, which stands for file stream. And then over here, I'm going to write std if stream. We'll just call it stream. So this stands for input file stream. And then I'll kind of give it that file path. That's the, the actual file that we're trying to open here. That already opens the file. So now what we need to do is actually go through that file line by line and just check to see, hey, are we specifying a certain shader type? Because we've kind of added our own syntax, right? We've got this hash shader vertex thing here, which basically says, hey, this is a new shader section and this is the type of the shader that it is. So we need to kind of read in that. And we're gonna go through the file line by line. And the way we'll do that is we'll actually do while stream uh, get, we'll, we'll use a function called get line. So while get line stream, and then we'll make a string here called line, which will contain our actual line while that doesn't equal zero, basically. Now get line is a function that actually is inside the string header. So we need to include string 
Uh, so while get line is still kind of valid, which means there are still more lines for us to read inside the file, we're going to just basically check to see line.find if that actual line contains our shader kind of custom syntax uh, token here. And if that doesn't equal std string and pos, which is basically an invalid string position, because find will return us the actual string position. You can see it returns a size t. It doesn't return a boolean or anything like that with whether or not it actually found our string. It actually just returns us uh, the position of it. So if it's n pos, it means it doesn't, it, it hasn't found it. So if it has found shader on that line, we need to basically find which type of shader it is. And again, I'm just going to use line.find if it if it's going to be vertex, if it finds vertex, um, then we're going to basically have to set the kind of mode to vertex, which we'll do in a minute. Um, and otherwise though, if it finds fragments, so if that doesn't equal std string and pause, then we're going to set the mode to fragments. Okay, so that's kind of how this is going to work. Um, we're just going to go through it line by line and we're going to keep adding uh, vertex. Uh, well, if the sh if the type is set to vertex, we're going to keep adding uh, these lines basically to our vertex shader string. If it's fragment, we're going to add them to the fragment shader string. Pretty simple. So now we actually need to add the strings that we're reading, add these lines that we're reading into some kind of buffer where we can just pile on line by line what the vertex shader and the fragment shader is. So to do that, I'm going to use something called string stream. Uh, so we'll have to include that, and that'll be under include s stream. If we scroll down here, I'm just going to make two different string streams. Uh, so we'll call this SS and I'm actually just going to use a kind of stack allocated array here to have two of them. Uh, one of them is going to be for the vertex shader, of course, one of them is going to be for, for the fragment shader. And the idea is um, we, need, we need to have some kind of mode as well. So are we currently reading in a vertex shader or a fragment shader? For, to, to do that, I'm just going to create an enum class here called shader type. And then we're going to have none, which is negative one. Uh, then we're going to have a vertex, of course, which is zero and fragment, which is one. I'm being very explicit with these numbers and I'll tell you why in a minute. We're also going to store the current shader type that we're reading in. So we'll set this equal to none by default. Okay, cool. So if we find vertex, if we find shader vertex on a line, we need to set the mode or the type to actually be shader type vertex. And then of course for fragment, we can set it equal to fragment. I'm kind of setting this up loosely. I could be a little bit cleaner with my code and actually have some more functions and stuff like that to work out what the type is from a string. But again, it's just overkill. This is a really simple function. So once I've done that, if, if I kind of, if we see hash shader on a line, we know that we need to set a type. Otherwise, if it's any other kind of line of code, then we actually need to add it to either the vertex or the fragment shader source code. And the way we do that is to this string stream, let me just get rid of this extra space, to this string stream, I'm going to basically push the line into it. Now I need to know which one to push to, and that's why we've got the shader type. So I'm going to grab the type and just cast it to an end and use it as an index into this array. We know that the array contains two elements, and we know that basically the first element in that array is going to be vertex, and the second one is going to be fragments. So I'm kind of using arrays here in a little bit of a clever way to actually, uh, you know, automate this a little bit more so that, so that I don't have to have a branch where I basically say, if the type is, you know, vertex, add it to the vertex string stream. If the type is fragment, add it to the fragment string stream. I can kind of just use the type as an index into the array, which is uh, just going to be a little bit better, basically. So over here, I'm going to basically add line into that string stream, followed by a new line character, just like that. And that's pretty much it. I mean, if you look at this code, this should divide our shader into two different types and add them to the appropriate string stream. So finally, at the end here, I need to actually return my code. Now we have a little bit of an issue because we are trying to return two strings. And of course, you can only return one kind of, you can return one variable in C++. So how do we return two variables? Now we could use something called a tuple or a pair. I actually have a lot of feelings about that. Actually, I might make a C++ video this week, maybe, that actually deals with, with this kind of multiple return type thing specifically. I think I will actually, that's probably a good idea. Um, I don't like using that stuff and I'll explain why in the C++ video. I don't want to bore you guys here, but what I would do if I need to kind of return multiple types here is I would actually make a struct called shader, I don't know, shader sources or something like that. We might actually just call this shader program source. And this is actually going to contain our, we'll call this vertex source. I kind of like to capitalize it. I'm kind of treating this almost like a C sharp property. That's why I'm capitalizing this because they are just public fields. Um, so we'll take in vertex source and fragment source. Okay, cool. Very basic struct. And I'm actually going to just return that struct. 
And then at the end here of my function, once I have the two, once I've built up and I've read all of the source code from that file, I'm just going to return uh, basically a struct that this struct, right? So I'm going to set the vertex source to be ss0.str and then ss1.str, okay? Which gives us the string back from the string stream. And that's all we need to do right now. So this code should set us up with the actual shader source code for both the vertex and the fragment shader. Awesome. So now let's scroll down and actually test this out. So the first thing I'll do is I'll kind of, uh, we might just get rid of our shader um, for now, just by commenting it out. I just really want to see if my function works first, to be honest. So we'll go shader program source, source or something like that equals parse shader. And then we'll take in our file path, which is just going to be res slash shaders slash basic dot shader, which is our file. So res slash shaders slash basic dot shader. Now this is kind of the first instance of us actually reading a file in C++ uh, in the series on my channel. So basically what you need to know about this is that if you specify a relative path like that, so not something that is an absolute path, you know, like C uses whatever, uh, starting from the C drive or whatever, since we're specifying a relative path, relative paths are always from the working directory. Now, if you run the executable outside of Visual Studio, the default working directory is just going to be the directory that contains that executable. So everything will be relative to that. But if we're running this through the Visual Studio debugger, the working directory is actually set by our Visual Studio debugging kind of properties. So if we right click on open on the OpenShell project, hit properties, you can see over here, we have a tab called debugging, right? And under here, we have a working directory. You can see here that it's set by default to our project directory. So we know that this file is relative to the project directory. That is the directory that actually contains our project file, which in this case is this directory, which just has our VCX proj. So you can see it should be relative to this. So res slash shaders slash basic dot shader. And that's exactly what I've written over here. Now that we've got this, let's actually just see out source dot vertex source. And also I'll do the same for fragment source. Now to divide this in some way, just to make it extra clear, I'm also going to copy this uh, kind of twice here and write, you know, vertex like that and fragments so that we can really see um, the, the two different shader types we have. And I'm just gonna hit F5. Okay, we've got one more syntax error here when we do gl delete shader. By the way, this code was wrong from the last episode. I added a little thing kind of just in Premiere Pro, my, like in my video editing software. I just had a little kind of note being like, this is what the function should be. It should not be GL delete shader. I don't know why I wrote that. It should be GL delete program. Okay. Because shader is actually just one shader type. Our program is actually going to delete our program. So that's what it should be. Let's comment that out for now though, because we did kind of comment out that shader code. Let's hit F5 to run this program. Hopefully we can see our parsing working correctly. So if I go to my console, you should see that we have a vertex and then the vertex shader and fragment and then the fragment shader. So it looks pretty good to me. They look like they're our correct shaders. Nothing crashed or anything like that. Looks pretty perfect to me. Let's go ahead and actually pipe that into our source code or specifically into our shader compilation function. So I'll bring this back and I'll bring back my GL delete program as well. And then instead of kind of providing vertex shader and fragment shader, now that we've got this, we can just provide source dot vertex source and source dot fragment source, just like that. Let's hit F5. And you can see that we get a red triangle. If I go back to my basic dot shader file, let's go ahead and change it. Let's make it, I don't know, let's just make it a nice little blue. So I'll make it 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.8, and then hit F5. As you can see, we get a nice blue triangle. Awesome. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We basically just took what we had with shaders, made it a little bit better, combined it all into one file. And now we can create shaders from files, which is pretty cool and gonna be way more easier. It's gonna be way easier for us to actually do that as we progress on with this series. Now in the future, we will probably abstract all this into a class as the code base kind of keeps growing. For now, we're not gonna worry about it. We're just gonna move on. We've covered vertex buffers and shaders. The next step that I really wanna cover is going to be about index buffers, okay? Because we need a way to actually render our triangle using something called an index buffer. And we'll talk about why we want one of those, what that actually is, and all of that in the next video. Uh, because it's probably not that apparent, the need for it probably isn't that apparent with a triangle, but as we kind of get more complex with our geometry, I mean, even if we try and render a square, which is pretty complex, right? Um, it's going to benefit us. It's going to basically be a huge benefit for us to use something called an index buffer. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can hit the like button. You can help support this series by going over to patreon.com forward slash the channel. 
there are some pretty cool rewards. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Uh, there's, I, I would never lie to you guys, right? First of all, this series would be absolutely nothing without my Patreon supporters. There's no way that I would be sitting here on a couch spending this much time making videos for you guys unless I was getting the support. So this is, thank you so much for letting me do this, first of all. But second of all, you'll get videos early, you'll get access to all the source code kind of episode by episode for this series and really for all, my, all of my series. And there's this really cool thing where basically if you're a top tier kind of supporter, there's this hangout that we do once a month where basically all the supporters get into one like video chat thing on Discord and we just talk about, we just hang out for an hour basically and just talk about whatever. It's a really good time. So definitely sign up for that if you're interested in help support the series. Uh, Discord is also a really good place to talk about this stuff. Rather than just leaving a comment below, which you could do as well, of course, I try and respond to all my comments. You can also head, o head on over to discord.com, or oh, sorry, thechannel.com slash discord, where there's basically just a community of people, like a instant messaging kind of format thing with multiple channels where you can talk about this triangle, the Open Gel series, C++, whatever it is that you want to talk about. A lot of people there as well uh, that can help you out with all your problems. And of course, don't forget to follow me on Twitter and on Instagram.com for such the channel as well. Just plugging absolutely everything. Also, you can buy the merch at this. I'm kidding, I don't have that link yet, but I'll get back to you with that shortly. Next time, Index Buffers, Cherno out, goodbye. Ooh.